What is up guys, Technicals here. Not sure if I'll actually even post this video, but figured it's somewhat mining related. Anyway, we got the mining shed. We know that the silencer is here and the exhaust is right here. The miners are pretty quiet. Well, they're quiet right now because of the silencer because it's, uh, it's like 60 degrees right now. It's pretty early in the morning. My aim today is to use the ant miner exhaust for a practical purpose. I've seen a few other articles of people talking about using heat as a resource I've seen a documentary some guy using uh asic exhaust to heat a bathhouse somewhere in new york first of all why are you mining in new york city second of all what the hell is going on in a bathhouse in 2024 hmm. Hmm. anyway i'm using mine for a completely different purpose now i'm a handy guy i like doing stuff around the house and my current big project is uh building a fence i'm fencing my entire property I'm doing most of it myself. So, I don't know if, if you're familiar, you gotta use pressure treated lumber for fencing, for outdoor stuff or ground contact. It's pressure treated, so what they do is they take it and they put it in a vacuum chamber and they suck out as much water as they can and then they inject in as much kerosene or arsenic or um, some caustic ass chemicals that like give you cancer. Everything gives you cancer these days. Anyway, the point being is that it keeps bugs and rot and bacteria and fungus and stuff like that from getting through to the core and rotting it out. Now, eventually it all does rot anyway, but it really slows it down. But the problem with pressure treated lumber is that when you buy it from home improvement stores, and places like that, unless it's kiln dried, it is super duper wet. So I'm not sure, I bought this a couple days ago, but if you press down on it, if you're in Lowe's or Home Depot, if you go and you push on it, you'll see that juice start to come out. It's super wet. You can get kiln dried, but it's much more expensive. So I got a lot of uh, fence to build. And so even look at this. I just lift, put these over here. Look at this. That's from two days of sit, just sitting on the concrete. The concrete wicked all that moisture out of those four by fours. So I got a big load of lumber. <laughs> I got a big load. I got a big load coming today. Anyway, the point being is that you cannot paint or stain pressure treated lumber unless it dries out, it gets down to below 20%, below 15% moisture uh, because the stain or the paint, it just won't stick or to flake off, it'll rinse off, whatever. You gotta wait for it to dry out. And so depending on where you are in the world, that might take up to like six months. Uh, if you're in a humid part of the world, maybe even longer. And me, I don't like to wait. I like to do a project and have it done, cross it off the list and I'm on to the next thing. I don't wanna do something and be like, all right, I guess I'll just wait six months to go and paint this fence. I want it to do it now so my thinking was in my noodle is i'll go ahead and buy the lumber and sit on it and that way it could be drying out and then as i'm building the fence the lumber stockpile i'm pulling from is already starting its process of drying because when you buy it fresh from the home improvement store they flip so much volume it's always going to be wet anyway i was like yeah i'll just store it in my building hey wait a minute i've got my own kiln dryer right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this lumber in i'm going to stack it up with spacers in between it all. I've got about 200 more of these uh, 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 inch and a quarter by six by eight deck boards coming in. And I got about 20 or 30 four by fours in varying length coming in. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put furring strips, modern mining, these are called furring strips by the way, uh, in between all of them, put some fans on it. I'm gonna keep the big fan running and my exhaust fan running and just keep like as much airflow going as possible. When the big load comes in, I'm gonna test it with the moisture meter and uh, we'll see where it is and then maybe give it like a couple days, see where it is after that. Compare it to the fence that's like sitting outside. We'll use that as a control uh, versus just baking in the sun to see how much faster it can really dry out. All right, he's on his way. They sent me the wrong wire. We got our lumber in. He was good enough to go ahead and pop it in here so I didn't have to manually put it on my tractor, bring it in here, and then stack it up. So we got that. We got enough furring strips for modern mining to make at least one mining rig frame. And so we're going to start stacking it up, put some fans on it, and see what we can get. You know, $79 delivery, uh, that's probably well worth it versus me taking it piecemeal. I mean, this would have taken me many trips in my Tacoma. Uh, I mean, even if I loaded it up, I mean, that's 200 deck boards and these four by fours. Oh my God, these 12 footers. I'm not anxious to, <laughs> yeah. This is better left for tomorrow. Okay, it is the next day. So I'm gonna just get started 
stacking up all this wood. Just to illustrate, there's obviously gonna be a variance between the wetness of some of the wood. Like obviously this one here is very wet. This one maybe not as much. So just kind of a pause and a spot check. Soft wood, okay. So where was it? I think, yeah, these two by fours down here have been drying for a little bit, but they're still pretty new. 60%, it's pretty wet. Here's some of the ones that just came in. I imagine it's gonna be hard for them to be any worse. Yeah, 66. All right, some of these deck boards. Sixty-one. This one's super wet. Sixty-eight. I mean, that's uh, that's pretty hellacious. We'll go over here. This one was sitting on the bottom. So if we uh, flip it over, it feels lighter. But I imagine that still gonna be pretty high. Not, not too bad. 20, 23, 24. So, yeah, you can tell there's a big variance here. That was a lot of wood. All right, so we got it all stacked up here. Got furring strips in between everything, lots of space for air to flow around did the same thing with the four by fours not the 12 footers i'm going to be using those tomorrow so got it all stacked up ant miners are right here i'm not sure i'm going to remove the silencer uh but what i might do is turn off the exhaust fans and let it get really hot in here uh maybe just for a couple days i'll see how things progress if the ant miners start overheating i'll turn the exhaust back on and i know i got to evacuate the moist air but uh yeah, maybe I'll leave the exhaust fans on. But my big fan, I'm gonna keep that running. I'm gonna probably kick that into high gear and then get some box fans or some ventilator fans and put it in here. Let's go ahead and take another moisture test. 31, here's a wet one. 52 and 35. But we need a control, right? So we're gonna take one of these and we're just gonna put it outside where it gets Probably about a half a day's sun. All right, it's still pretty early. I'm gonna be quiet because it's 4.30 still. All right, I'm just gonna set it here right in the sun. So it'll get mostly sun during the day and uh, it will get rained on if it rains, but I don't think it's gonna rain for like a week. You know, I gotta say, when this thing's at full tilt, balls out, it's kind of intimidating, to be honest. It's kind of scary. But if one of those blades came off, uh, I'd have a bad time. Anyway, got the fans in place. Nothing spectacular here. Two box fans, one squirrel cage pointed at the four by fours. Got this thing going full blast. The exhaust fans and any heat that makes it out of the, uh, the ASICs and circulates around in here will have hopefully a cumulative effect because that's a lot of lumber. It's a lot of moisture to dry out. Um, and you know, the moisture that's down in here, this is why I wanted to orient them this way so I could shoot the air in through the side and hopefully have it filter out uh so we'll see we took the measurements today is uh april 27th so you know i'm gonna be still working on this fence and i imagine i'd probably start running through this pretty quickly so i'll take a spot check in maybe a couple days two three days kind of see where it is because again i'm not supposed to paint this stuff until it's like below 15 percent now it, whether or not that makes a difference of having to repaint or restain in eight years versus 10 years. I mean, does it really matter? I mean, it's just people on the internet drive me crazy with that kind of thing. Like, oh, you have to do it this way or it'll be ruined. Like your, your fence will only last 10 years instead of 12 years if you do it this way that requires all this extra work. You know, and I, I don't know if how true that really is, um, but I guess, you know, we'll find out because am I really gonna give a shit about the pen, fence peeling in, you know, 12 to 15 years versus it doing it in 20 years am i still going to live here in 20 years i don't know anyway for the purposes now if i can do this this is you know an hour of work will it allow me to 
finish this project without having to wait an extra month? Or, you know, will it save me time in the future? Will it allow me to operate more quickly? I think so. I think it's worth rolling the dice hour of work to stack this up and fan it. Will these warp from trying to dry them too quickly? I mean, the fact of the matter is these are going to warp regardless. Um, you screw them up when they're green, they're going to warp on the fence. You know, maybe not as heavily if they're screwed in, uh, but at least if they are pre-warped, like if they warp this way, then I can screw them in from this direction and, you know, straighten them back out versus they're on the fence and they get screwed in and then they start doing all these torques and they end up looking like this. So that's my thinking. We're going to check back in a few days and see where we land. All right, 24 hours. Been 24 hours exactly since I started the fans on this stuff. So we're going to take another reading here. See which ones did I do? This one up here. 20s so definitely some improvement Ugh. yeah you probably can't see it it says 35 so that's probably one of the juicier ones all right it is now may 3rd we're gonna check our controls been sitting outside it has not rained at all Good and deep in there. 22. And as you can easily tell, this the pile is significantly smaller. I've been using it pretty quickly. So this stuff was sort of in the middle, so it didn't have as much air exposure from the fans. Uh, but it's been like this for about uh, 18 hours. Let's see what we got. Oh, 16. Hey, below 20. Below 20, 19, this one, 19, pretty good, 4 by 4 this one seems pretty good, wow, 22 on the 4 by 4 that's excellent, how about this one, this one looks moderately juicy, 23, not bad, alright, I'll try one of these uh, 10 footers, find the spot with the whiter wood whoa yep she needs time how about this guy hey pretty good 20 you can feel how hard they are much more dense I'm gonna get it one that's deeper in there now I haven't been checking the ends maybe the ends are uh, give us a better indication 24 this one's kind of deep in there 21 that's not cut from heartwood this one's dead ass center cut. Let's see if we can get anything out of him. 20, 20 at the end. Let's just see for shits and giggles. Find a piece of pressure treated that's been sitting in this building for a long time. Been sitting in here for many months. Dry, hot. What are you gonna give me? I mean, that's. So, this piece is small, 16, 15.8, 16%. So, if this small piece of pressure treated deck board, it's pretty thin, a lot, a lot of surface area to off gas, to evaporate. Let me see, it's kind of bowing. Uh, but it's been sitting in this hot ass environment, hot windy environment for months, and it's only down to 16 percent like it's just i just don't see it getting any better that's kind of the rub with the uh the asic dried lumber um certainly a difference uh versus what's been sitting outside and the stuff that's been sitting outside has been sunbathed you know for a week um and sure it gets dewy in the morning there's humidity in the air not not so much the case in here uh, but it hasn't been exceptionally hot, uh, but these have had active fans on them, you know, just running nonstop. And that brought me from, you know, in some instances, 50% down to like 
22. And so that's where pretty much everything is on the outside, the fence that the professionals built with the good, good lumber. Um, so I think, yeah, it works. I mean, uh, I don't know that I can, uh, that anyone would wanna make a business out of this. I mean, but, you know, as people are making, heating up bath houses with their ASIC monitor, that heat's just being wasted regardless. You're just pumping it out. So, you know, if someone's got a bunch of ASIC miners in a warehouse and a ton of extra space because, you know, a large space, it doesn't take long to fill up on capacity on electricity with those. So if you got a lot of extra warehouse space, you buy yourself 10 grand worth of lumber and have pays, you know, some temps to stack it up or something like that, air it out and then sell it at a 15% premium to weekend warriors like me that want stuff that they can paint right away. You know, maybe there's some potential there. Now, as far as the warp factor goes, warp factor six. Uh, I don't know uh, if, you know, these, they don't seem like they've warped that much. They've lost 50% of their moisture content pretty quick. I haven't noticed the warping when I've been building with them. But, uh, you know, I think maybe there's some potential there, but I don't know, is it worth the time? Remains to be seen. But I figured you guys might like to see this, kind of an interesting thing of repurposing ant miner or ASIC heat, mining heat, you know, for some purpose other than, or need something other than just pumping it outside and getting rid of it. So if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video for more content like this. And if there's anything else that you want to see or any kind of cockamamie ideas that you have, let me know in the comments below. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.